to San Diego High School, class of 85 especially, and 84 too. I liked a lot of those guys. And now it's San Diego Academy. You know what? They got married. They hyphenated. And people are like, what the fuck are the kids going to look like? You know what? Let's throw a metaphorical orgy. Throw everybody in to every class at San Diego. Whatever happened to Dan Quinn? Well, you know what? Dan Quinn went to Notre Dame and he ran into another John Cannon. Flat. I mean, yeah. See that? That's like a Lawrence Taylor type stop. Because Holtz knows I'm so fucking good. The idiot actually orders me to stay home and, like, not do my job, okay? And then when I do my job, okay, and get fired for it, I'm like, fuck this. I'm done. I quit on the spot. I thought I would reinvent myself on top, come out boxing, and he wins the state title, goes to Des Moines, Iowa in 91, and then goes back to Miami, and he gets Rodney King. Yeah, they fucking blow my, I mean, tore my knee up. And I come back to Encinitas, and I ask my uncle if we can hire an attorney. You know what, uh, Sue, Rodney King? He's like, yep, get a job, pay for one. <laughs> I'm like, no shit. Is that how it is and shit? So, that's not fiction. To the class, uh, well, wait a minute. Where am I going with this? Keith Karch, you're included because you were a legend. Oh, yeah. Um, I heard all about you, Keith Karch, all the time. Flat. I mean, all the time. And fact, not fiction. Ed Wiley, you were absolutely one of the best. I, if, I'll tell you what, man. He says, I expect you to reach for great things, both athletically and with the books. Good luck, Dan, Ed Wiley. You know what? If loving another man... <laughs> To all my haters out there, makes you gay. And in a very non-gay way, I love that man right there. He was, oh, he was special. He was good. And you know what? If everybody was like him, or you know what? Even Coach Army, okay? You know what? A hard ass on the field, cool, all right? I mean, everybody, especially, especially Coach M. I mean, am I going to it correctly, you know? Lights, camera, action. I mean, I should get better props. You know, lighting. Where is Coach M? There he is. That guy was special. He was a good guy. All right? Basically, every coach that we had was cool. John Cannon. And then, let's get back to you. My nigga. My nigga. Um, fact, dog. You are a monster. And this proves it right here. Okay? The Steve Taylor play. The one where I smash him in the mouth and, you know, the collision is heard across the fucking street. And then he isn't knocked down like everybody else is. Uh, he just goes fucking back three yards and then hits the sidelines and turns it up. And I beat him there. And I missed tackle number two. And you tell me what a piece of shit I am. Basically, and if I don't shape up, we got to think about offensive tackle. Are you fucking, dude, you are the epitome of what's gone wrong with sports in America, okay? And you know what, John? You know what you were? You were like a little precursor to drill instructors at boot camp, straight up, because that's what football is, man. It's a theater for the military machine. And uh, they allow fucking guys like you, okay, to deal with guys that end up there, all right? Guys like me, you fucked hard. I'll tell you what, was there anybody on any team that you've ever fucking seen, John Cannon, that could cover, like, Alan Pinkett, man for man. Straight up, shut him down, you fucking bitch. All right, straight up, John. If football was the only thing in life that actually meant anything, okay? Like, around fucking the Crimson Tide and around uh, the Tigers. You know what? Uh, that was something to see. Yeah, straight up. Sitting on a bus and having 5,000 fans fucking screaming, Tiger Bait. I mean, they're not just saying it, dog. They're screaming it, Tiger Bait, and rocking the fucking bus. Like, I mean, it was the shit, dog. Uh, yeah. And, you know, to make a Lawrence Taylor type play and then get fired, I was like, fuck this. I would have motherfuckers like you killed, dog. Straight up. Ask around, fat boy. Okay. Remember that time? 
in Juanitas. No, you didn't fucking see what culminated. Straight up, San Diego. Okay? Fact, not fiction. What y'all should do with a quickness is rush to Trader Joe's with a quickness. Get some stevia. Dust it in your mouth. Feel the incredible surge of energy. And know that when, when that taste is actually pleasurable, okay? Uh, after you've gone through the five-day purge, you <laughs> tell you what, when you go to the bathroom, immediately courtesy flush, okay? Because it's going to smell the entire house up. Foul, toxic. You're going to go back to high school. That kid right there, he fulfilled his vision, all right, at Notre Dame. He discovered the fountain of, <laughs> I was about to say orgasm, which is true, but the fountain of youth. Fact, not fiction. Lots of stevia acts like the cure. Put it in water and blend. And I'll tell you what, Athena Kazakis and Craig Tusher, you know, the smart ones, okay? That right there, the fact that soap floats at all, okay? Uh, that's a big one. It's the same stuff like on a whirlpool, okay? When energy is added only, the toxic shit, it goes back to... You know, looking like mistletoe to a tree, okay? It's invisible, okay? It's still toxic, but it's hidden. Stevie makes it float. Get it out. The stuff on the bottom, weighed heavier, okay? More room for natural, heavier hydrogens. Lighter, toxic, man-made chemicals, gone. And a kitty cat named Peachy, my mom's, who was about to be put to sleep, Craig Tusher. Seriously, she laps tuna fish, pure H2O shakes into perfect health to the point where... The kitty door had to be put down, San Diego. Seriously. Fucking, she wanted to go outside exploring at night. And I was like, fuck that. She's like Mona Lisa, all right? And uh, fact, Craig, how rich are you, okay? Fact, Craig, when you went to Princeton, dog, I know that you talked about me to your roommates, to David Rockefeller and, you know, that crew. And you know what? Yeah, <laughs> I should have gone to Harvard, dog. I didn't want to get my ass kicked for four years. You know what? I should have just walked on to the Raiders, homeboy. Okay? But um, it's all good because now I have two blessings. And I have two miracles. That's one of them right there. And fact, not fiction. To every lady at... I'll put it like this. And this is the honest to God truth. That man was a fucking saint. He was a good guy, okay? I don't know about Saint, but as a coach, good man. That motherfucker, you're a monster, dog, okay? I mean, fact, John, if you think you're going to demote me from linebacker, because I put it like this, John, fact, not fiction. If football were the only fucking thing in life, okay, all that mattered, did I already say this? Your parents would have been fucking sterilized, dog, okay? Because they're genetic defects. And so... Why fucking waste the resources that it's going to take to produce a pile of shit like you, homeboy? Remember when you fucking uh, tore your Achilles tendon, you great athlete, dog? Oh, yeah, playing badminton, was it? And, uh, oh, yeah. So, yeah, San Diego, if you want to make some money, okay, uh, what you should do is start, you know, making money off stories about Dan Quint. Straight up. Because I fucking say something to... Make this motherfucker's face beat red at Yogi's. And then as I'm on my way out, Keith Carts, okay, um, since we don't have a picture of your brother who was an assistant coach, but, oh, yeah, America, that you, I mean, how many guys out there hate, hate their fucking football coaches because they're fucking dicks? Well, guess what? That kid right there, when he was a senior, it was Thursday night, and his brother, was probably getting oral copulation from this new kid. Nah, I'm kidding. But, uh, yeah, he's kissing his ass and going to play him in front of Pete Carroll. So we had an argument on the field, and uh, it was about who was going to play, who was better. I was the fucking captain of the defense, dog, and it's my product and shit, right? Um, so your brother wants to continue it in the locker room, and I just got done showering and um, a little pissed, and I'm in my towel, and your brother starts yapping. And so I turn around and I poke him in the fucking chest. And I say, you know what? You don't phase me, punk. I said, I'll kick your fucking ass. And I said, I'll kick your brother's ass too. And I said, what the fuck are you, an assistant coach? I said, you're going to be gone fucking what? Today, tomorrow, next week, whatever. Who the fuck cares about you? I said, me, motherfucker? I'm going to anywhere I want, bitch. Okay? So 
This is my defense, and my friend's not fucking sucking your cock. Well, you know what? Tough shit. I want to win. And I think, am I, am, am I correct? Uh, did Pete Carroll actually start against Lincoln? Okay. So, John Cannon, you know, um, when I'm leaving Yogi's, okay, I see Mike Carts, and I think, you know what? I'll throw this fucking punk a bone. I mean, fact, not fiction. If they made a movie and called it Twins, you know what? <laughs> Keith, stud, savage, all right? You know, he's Arnold. And then fucking Mike is Danny, pissed off, taking it out on all the innocent kids around him, man, huh? because he's a coach. Flat, I mean, straight up. And, uh, yeah, so I'm walking by, my, I'm like, what's up, Mike? And he's like, yeah. and I went, metaphorically. And I said, are you fucking crazy, bitch? I said, remember when I fucking poked you in the fucking chest senior year in high school? Okay. Told you basically I thought you were a punk and I'd kick your fucking ass, but I'd get in trouble. But, uh, 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 now it ain't like that, dog. So say it again and I'm fucking you up. And if you ever say it again, I'm going to beat your punk ass. I said, are we clear on that? I actually fucking made him fucking respond, dog. Verbally cut his cock off. John Cannon, and so we went down to Juanita's dog, and that kid right there, all right, was the last in line, all right, four friends turned to one, and three right behind me, eating, <laughs> typical guys, man, uh, I knew I'd back up, they just had to fucking, uh, you know, be alerted to it, and the alert came from a savage elbow to punk number one's fucking jaw, isn't that right, Keith Carts, uh, I'm sure you heard about it, straight up. This is the truth, uh, Jim McCranz. Remember Vangel Creech? You couldn't forget her. Remember? Okay, you know the one, the blonde. Fucking, she took me to one of those, <laughs> one of those ritzy fucking restaurants on the beach, dog. And we're sitting there, and homeboy's friend is a bartender, and he has a fucking thing over his nose because he got fucking thump. He was one of them. Okay, fact, not fiction. Anyways. It immediately turned into three lumps of fucking shit standing there waiting for my thunderous motherfucking right hand. Boom! Four down. And then number five, Keith, comes to the door, dog. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> Dude, none of your fucking business, really. Oh, I'm making it my business. Oh, yeah? Step into my fucking world, bitch. You know? Boom. Uh, done. And, uh, yeah, so with that said, I'm going to be rich. Fact, not fiction. Put Stevie in water, blend, soap floats. It's a finite source, Craig Tusher. You can get it all out to where it doesn't float anymore. I guarantee you that water frozen on this planet for longer than man-made toxins to infiltrate it. You put Stevia into it when it melts, blend, it triples in size, and immediately goes back to water. There is no soap floating. We can theoretically get all of that toxic shit out of the ocean take earth back to Eden, okay? There's an algae. When you suffocate it, it madly produces hydrogen. And speaking about mad, you know what? Um, put it like this to all you fucking haters out there talking shit. It's not my fault that when God was handing out bodies for linebacker Lawrence Taylor, Dick Buckus, okay? Fact, not fiction. Here's a story. You know what? Could any of you cover running backs all over the field, man to man? Because he could and now still can because of stevia and massive amounts of fucking THC. Oh, yeah. You know, that kid that was once, I'll tell you what, that kid right there, I fucking hated drug dealers. I really didn't know any drug dealers, but I knew those motherfuckers. They always had a lot of fucking really cool, good looking women around them and seemed to have a lot of friends. And you know what? Uh, drove really fucking cool cars. And I was fucking jealous and pissed. And you know what? On my journey, Jeff Cooper, you know what? Ran across a lot of really cool guys. And I'll tell you what, homeboy. You owe me, dog. All right? Because your journey started out uh, you almost at the penthouse, didn't it? Fact, not fiction. Why don't we make some money about my fucking fight with Mark Brandon when I'm a sophomore, okay, in high school, 16, and see that picture of Mark? He looked pretty close to that, didn't he? So I'm fighting a fucking man, and then handle it, and they could put that in Tequila Sunrise 2, all right, revisited. Craig Tusher, 
It's like this. How many people have you helped Craig Tusher? All right. Do you have any secrets, Craig Tusher, that will lead everybody at San Diego to looking like they did basically when they were young and at their very best? Because if they put a lot of Stevie in the water and they drink, it's going to happen. And fact, not fiction. And you know what? I've been remiss in getting to this, okay? Oh, God, I hope I can get there without wasting too much fucking time. You know what? Fact, teammates.